Hello and welcome. This is episode five. We are covering some good, juicy topics today. So today's questions are going to be revolving around SEO, primarily Squarespace SEO, and we are going to cover some stuff. These are questions that I hear here and there. Everyone has been asking me. No, these are questions I hear here and there that I think are worth addressing to actually really help clarify the purpose of SEO, why you should invest in SEO if you're looking to invest in SEO and what SEO offers for you as a business owner, as a freelancer, as someone who has a product or service or something on a website that they are trying to sell. So the questions that we are going to cover today revolve around these few topics. The first one being, should you do an SEO project if you know you can't compete the current top ranking or if you are not trying to compete at all with the current top ranking should you invest in seo what if ads show up at the top and do and you don't want to run ads it's a big question but that's the first one the next one is what type of seo service should you use a one-time service or an ongoing service the next question is are seo courses worth it and should i be paying for seo services kind of a should I pay for the course or should I pay for a service? Should I pay for both? What does that look like? The final one, how long does SEO take to work? So we are going to cover all four of those questions today in this episode, in this video, and feel free to skip ahead to certain parts of the video or the recording to go directly to the answer. But with that, let us introduce what this is. My name is David and I am a search specialist. I've been managing Google ads, running Google ads, and spend a lot of time on search networks, learning and optimizing for businesses, freelancers, entrepreneurs, course creators, any of the above. If you want to know more about me or get connected with my updates, the best way to do that, the best, best way to do that is go to spacebaragency.com forward slash newsletter spacebaragency.com forward slash newsletter sign up for the newsletter there i would so appreciate it introduce yourself let me know how you got connected i would love to hear that but that is the best way to stay up with everything seo wise everything that we're doing content wise courses that we're creating anything that can bring value to your world to your business that is the best way to stay connected all right so let's begin should you do an seo project should you hire seo and we'll talk about the different ways of hiring seo but should you even explore SEO as something to do if you're not trying to compete with the top rankings, you don't think you can compete with the top rankings, or you don't need to. Your business is doing great. You don't need to. And you're just curious if you should even invest in SEO. This is a really good question because it clarifies even the purpose of SEO from the foundation and then from there. So by investing in SEO, let's just start with the basic premise. By investing in SEO and raising your rankings in Google, you'll send more traffic to your website, which can generate more leads and sales for your business. Now, this is the general principle of SEO, but there's another principle that I would say is a hidden principle, a principle that optimizes your website, but not for the purposes of generating new leads. And primarily, this is how I would break it down. By investing in SEO and cleaning up your ranking and cleaning up your results, you'll ensure your ranking has no errors, looks as it should, another way to say that, looks as you want it to look, and is set up properly for Google. Now, when a designer designs a website, they often are just focused on design, fairly, fairly so. With that said, what ends up happening is when they're just focused on design, they're spending so much time and energy on design that they're not really thinking of SEO. And what ends up happening is the search results that come up, the title may come up right, but the actual page description, so the title is going to be that blue text in a Google search result. That little gray text, that little paragraph underneath the blue, underneath your URL, that, gr that gray text, that can show up has a lot of different things. It could pull image alt tags. What does that mean? So if you upload an image to your page and say it's at the top of the page, it may say image underscore 4215.jpg. And then if you have four images, it may just list those four JPEGs there. If you have a video playing, it may list the description or the name of the video there. What shows up there can be very much so not what you want to show up there. And so you want to be intentional about that. You want to make sure it shows up as it should. You want to make sure your page titles are correct. Your URL slugs are correct. Your site description is correct. Your page description is correct. And you also want to make sure that Google is crawling your website properly and that there are no significant errors with how your content is being pulled. 
With that said, investing in SEO, now that we're here, investing in SEO at this point is not about optimizing ranking or improving ranking. It's about optimizing your website and your content for Google to understand what is on your site. It's basically like a translation. If you think about it, you may have a message that you want to share, but let's say you want to translate it from English to Spanish. What you're saying is correct, but you need to get it translated so that the person hearing the message who speaks Spanish could, could understand the message. It's so funny. I'm coming up with this example on the spot, but basically that's a, a way to think about it is your website is understood by the user but you wanna make sure Google understands your website so it pulls the right data and, and shows it in the right way. And this is actually very beneficial because it also how your website shows up on social or iMessage or any of these other pieces. And those are a little bit above and beyond SEO, but when you're talking to an SEO expert, they should be able to point you in the right direction on these topics of your site title, your overall site title, your overall site description, every single page's site title, every single page's site description, all the URLs are on your website, all the social sharing icons on your website, all of that are things that could be addressed to make sure it shows up right. Another thing is you may have pages in the back end of your site that you do not use. And a good SEO expert would be able to come alongside you or if you did this, you'd be able to make sure those pages are hidden from Google. You don't want the page, the thank you page showing up on Google. You don't want the privacy policy necessarily showing up on Google. You want to make sure there's certain pages that don't take up your top rankings so that when someone does search for you, now this isn't about random search. This is someone searching for you specifically or is searching for a very niche category or topic that you fall into that when you show up, the right data gets pulled. And so that that person, the user could understand either I've landed on the right spot or they don't see mistakes. You just avoid them seeing mistakes on your website, on your search results that reflect who you are, your business and what you offer. And so coming back to the question, let's make this full circle. And there's one more part of this question I do want to answer. Should you do an SEO project? Should you invest in SEO if you don't even want to compete with the top rankings? You don't think you can compete with the top rankings or you're not even trying to compete at all. I would say it is a healthy for any business, it is a healthy investment to invest in SEO. SEO is something that you want to make sure you show up proper. Your results are clean. And these are things that an SEO expert could manage, not promising a result, but making sure everything shows up as it should. Now, the last part of this question is, what if only ads show up at the top and you don't want to run ads? I still find it very likely that in that case, in any industry I've worked in, it's very important to make sure the same thing we just discussed. You want to make sure that your results are clear, that your results look good, and that your results overall share and show what you want, not anything that it just pulls. A lot of times designing a website would be a process of manipulation of the pages, of the content, of using custom code to create what I want but not in consideration of an SEO strategy or how is this gonna show up on Google? That's just a question that after a site is built, once a site is completed, that is something that you want to invest in in your thinking and your process. Typically you wanna do it before, but if you haven't done it before, doing it afterwards is very valuable as well. And so investing in some type of service or in some type of course is a really good method. And I will just throw this in at this point. If you go to YouTube and search Digital Essentialist or any of our, our videos around this topic, you will find a lot of valuable content around SEO. I did a video about a year ago that's really done really well around SEO and just understanding the basics of setting up some SEO. There will probably be more videos that we produce over time that go onto the channel. So that's another place where you could just find free content of how to optimize your website. And again, even that's what the newsletter is for. You'll find out more tips and tricks of how to optimize your website as you go. Now, the next question, what type of SEO service should I use? A one-time service or a long-term ongoing service? Now, some people who may watch this or listen to this, especially if you're in the SEO world, you may listen to this and say, this is not the way to think about it. So I'm going to give you two methods. I think a lot of people would actually verify these methods and they might just the how to maybe a little bit different, but this is how I look at it. There's two levels of this. My biggest recommendation for SEO 
two levels. The base level is if you're looking to boost SEO ranking, awesome. Awesome. That's great. An ongoing service can be fabulous, but it is an investment. So it's worth considering that as you start out. An SEO service can be a great, great way to build your business. It's so nice to get organic leads at no cost. And as you build it, consistently get those leads. That's such a valuable tool. But at the same time, it is an investment. So an ongoing service can be an investment. And you want to find a service that is producing content for you. Just doing quote unquote SEO work on your website on the back end won't be enough. You want something that is going to produce content for you. It probably invests in some type of content strategy. And honestly, you might be able to get away with investing in a content strategy, not an SEO expert. What I mean is a lot of content providers that write content for you or create content for you, they're coming from an SEO perspective and you might get more bang for your buck having them create content for you. So on a monthly basis, if you're paying for content to be written for you, created, I would do Google searches and look for copywriters or content writers or content systems. There's a few companies out there I'm testing. None of them I am. I feel confident to say these are the way and the truth. Like none of them I feel are the way to go yet. I haven't had enough experience with any of them to say this is a great resource, but there are agencies out there, companies out there that will write content for you. You provide a brief instruction, audience, direction, SEO keywords that you want to include, and this and that will get you off on the right foot. Now, if you're looking to boost SEO, but you this is and then this is level two. So at the base level, it's I think if you're looking to do SEO work, number one, just know it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing process. So even if you pay for a one-time service, it's something you're going to want to do long-term. It's not something that you do once and it just magically appears into and works out perfectly. The next thing is this. This is kind of level two of, of my thinking is if your site has less than 10,000 users a month, unique visitors to your site a month, I would invest in a one-time service. Optimally, the, this one-time service will get you set up properly, get you set up in the right direction, and then allow you to focus in on either creating content yourself or hiring content out. And that's a very clear method for you to begin and get started with the least amount of capital and also getting started on the right foot. It is very good to have the expert come in who can optimize, get you in the right direction, for your goals, for your website, and then from there you take the reins. So when we do an SEO project, what we do is we always start with our second and third package. We always start with keyword research. Keyword research is the big driver. We want to optimize your site around the best keywords for you. This is the way we say it, the most relevant keywords and the most search keywords. So we're trying to find that mix that if somebody searches this phrase and it is highly likely that people are searching this phrase and they come to your website, they're going to find what they're looking for. And that is the place you want to be. You want to find those keywords and then use that to create content around. And it might not even be content. This is just a side note. It might not even be content for that user specifically, but it allows Google to know. It gives Google the idea that you are an expert in this field. And that's a really important differential. You might be creating content that is geared toward the end user, but it really is to please Google in a way and, and allow Google to understand what you offer, who you are, and what you can do by just putting more content rich ideas out there. So you take this keyword and then you break it out into 50 posts and you take another keyword and you break that out into 50 posts. And now you create the system where there's content being generated, but at the same time, you're allowing Google to know who you are. And so then your rankings go up and then that new user who searches for something that's relevant to your business, they look for you and then they find you. Well, it's because you've established that authority in the market. So the second level of my consideration is if you have less than 10,000 unique visitors a month, I would opt in for a one-time service or a course, mainly because that is going to get you going and it's going to take time unless you're willing and ready to pay a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars a month for SEO and content and all of that. The best way to start is with a one-time service and then you could begin creating content based on those keywords. You wanna be like a target or like a, you wanna be very focused. You might have a few things you touch, but start with like the most important part of your website and focus in there on your keywords. Make sure you optimize for one to three 
major keywords with one idea group, so like one focus idea group, even if you might offer different things, start there and optimize for that. And then you could build around that over time. The next thing is if you do have 10,000 or more unique visitors a month, I would go for a monthly ongoing SEO service, primarily because that will allow you to make sure if anything breaks, if anything happens, if anything isn't working as it should, to the best of their ability, they could address it. No one controls Google. And so there are a few things that they could do to optimize or fix to the best of their ability on your search results and making sure that as you publish new content, it's being published properly so it shows up right. I imagine that Apple spends and Nike spend a lot of time, money and energy in making sure the SEO is set up properly. So when they launch a new page, that it goes up right. And that's such a cool process because it works when you type in iPhone 12 or iPhone 11 or iPhone 8 it shows up with the right page. It doesn't just show up with some arbitrary page. They're very targeted and very focused on their search results. So overall, just to sum that up, if you have less than 10,000 users, 10,000 unique visitors a month, use a service, a one-time service, get going. And I would try to ensure we do this, but I would try to ensure they give you recommendations for next steps. So they set you off on the right path. I believe in empowerment so much, especially for small business owners who are trying to generate more leads, not to bore you with the, the details of SEO, but to give you top level advice that can help you move forward next steps and continue to improve your website. Now to the third question, are SEO courses worth it? And should I be paying for SEO services? Now I have a biased view. I sell these services and I sell courses. But what I'd say is yes, it's completely worth it, especially to have an expert go in. Some of the stuff this expert is gonna do is gonna be straightforward and very simple. Check this box, move this, make sure this is filled in, make sure that's filled out, those types of things. But what the expert has that a newbie won't is the ability to understand how everything plays together. And that paying for that and getting that type of service as you begin is so valuable to the long term growth and strategy of what you're going to be doing, especially if you do want to invest in SEO and you're going to invest in content. I'd highly recommend in some type of service that does the base work for you, gets you going on the right foot, gives you clear directives, next steps. I listed that so fast, but those three things are so important and they give you keywords that you can start with. The keyword research, I think, is really important because it becomes your driving force. What is the market searching for that I offer that I can target so then I could show up in more searches when that market is searching? So when you can connect those dots really well and you know exactly where your focus and where your target is, now you're not guessing and you're also very much so optimizing for that search engine optimization. And I think courses are really good if you are tech savvy or in, if you want to learn how to do it yourself. What we do is we'll do the core hard work, say that in apostrophe because quotations because it's all rel relative, right? But we do the hard work that gets you going and then we give you recommendations and course content so that you can optimize further from there. And what that looks like is this, basically you get an outline, the work that was completed, and then you get next steps, especially when you're creating new content or you're creating new pages or you're creating blog posts or articles or eBooks, anything that's adding to your site, developing your site, you wanna know how to then number one, think about it from an SEO strategy, but number two, on the other side of that, you wanna be able to then push yourself in the right direction so that you know once you've created the content, it's optimized for search results. And so those things together, those things as they play together are a really good way, are a really, really healthy way to get moving in the right direction. And so that's a little bit of a shorter question, but I would highly recommend looking at SEO courses and paying for SEO services. Both of those are things that can be optimized. Both of those things could help you, especially if you're tech savvy and you wanna learn how to do this yourself. Both, you could use both of them. It's not an either or. You could pay for a course, get started, or you could pay for a service. I probably recommend paying for the service first, seeing what gets done, making sure, like asking the proper questions at the end, getting kind of recommendations and next steps from there, following possibly paying for a course or some type of course that helps you optimize your site 
further. And finally, finally, how long does SEO take to work? This is probably one of the most important questions that I get asked. And most people ask out of a kind part, but it's one of those things that seems like shouldn't it work right away? Now, no one can guarantee results. So let's just start on that platform. Go Google should SEO expert guarantee results and you'll see a thousand articles about how they can't and SEO is not Google is the only one who controls search results. And so nobody could promise results. And you never want to work with an expert that does promise results. It's like working on a very broken used old vehicle. They'll say, Hey, if we fix the transmission, it should work. And then you drive off the lot, the transmissions fixed, you drive off the lot. And two days later, your car breaks down again. It's one of those things like they did the service they promised. But sometimes there's other factors involved that are just I hate going to the mechanic. But it, it just happens to be the work, the service that is provided and how it works. And there are guarantees and there are promises that people can make to show their best foot forward, the business or agency to show their best foot forward on optimizing your SEO. But it is good with this question, how long does SEO take to work to have realistic expectations? I remember reading a blog post article from an SEO agency that talked about launching a brand new site. When they launched the brand new site, they launched it with 80 pieces of content, 80 pieces of content. That was their strategy to begin on SEO. And that was their starting point. And then they'd be producing content weekly, if not every few days to publish on the website. So before I answer the question, we really have to start on the right foot. If your website just got launched today, it is going to take time. And if you launched with just four to six, maybe eight pages on your website, well, it's going to take a lot of effort for that to start to get optimized. Now, if your website name is say, first name, last name consulting, for me, say for example, David Iskander Consulting, David Iskander SEO, that's gonna be a very unique, what they call a long tail keyword. That's very unique to me. And I may start showing up for that. But if you're looking for more general and broad searches, I would recommend that SEO is going to take anywhere between six to 12, even six to 18 months. I am estimating the long SEO is a long game. So I am estimating on the long path of what to expect, especially for general terms, very general terms or very competitive ideas. Those are going to be really hard to compete. And if you top and if you put on top of that, you're competing with different companies like either Yelp or Amazon or sometimes Facebook. But if you're competing with major companies, big, large companies, it is a different beast to be working with. So first of all, if your site is brand new, six to 18 months to really see things happen. If you just launch your site and you're posting content regularly, I would then recommend somewhere between four to 12 months. And then just for the basis of a fair understanding, the general rule on the internet is how long does SEO take to work? If you Google that, the general rule is anywhere bef between four to six months. So if you do a one time service today, you should see some type of impact to your analytics or to your leads or something like that within four to six months. Now, if this is very much the intro, you're just starting out. I would recommend more time and I would recommend that you're working on creating content, creating blog posts. Everything isn't about just creating blog posts. The thing about blog posts, though, is it puts more content on your website for Google to understand who you are and what you provide. That's the really important part. Again, it's not that the actual end user is going to be reading all this content. It may show you as an authority to the end user, and it may do some other things along the way to help you in that process. But the key is allowing Google to know that you are an authority on these things. And as people visit these pages and you create content that's worthwhile and it's rich in the keywords that you are focused on, well, you're optimized in the right position and that helps your ranking improve. The basic premise of Google, just to back everything up to the very beginning, the basic premise of Google is if I search for something, I find what I'm looking for. That's it. 
That is it. If I search something, I find what I'm looking for. And if we could accomplish that over and over and over and over and over again, it builds trust with the platform. So I don't really question at this point, even with all my experience, I don't question if Google could find me the right results. I know if I go there, I can end up finding what I'm looking for. It might take a little bit of digging and finessing and going back and forth and, and all of that. But Google is really good at giving me the top results. So if I'm looking for a content agency to create content for me, if I Google it, I'll see a few ads, I'll see the organic results, I'll be able to go through them, I'll be able to see what terminology they use. So I could click on a few of them, and then I can go back to Google search, search and look for a few more. I'm gonna find what I'm looking for because the way it's set up and established, I now trust the platform in that way. So with Google search results, how long does it take for the SEO work to come into play? I would say anywhere between four to six months as you're doing the work. So every time you do new work, that's another four to six months out. So if you write a new article today and you write another one every other week, so every two weeks you're putting on a new piece of content, that's all building on your SEO, which is so valuable for you long term. That's the important part. This is a game that is not quick. If you want quick results, you pay. Google is very good with this. If you want quick results, go to Google ads and start paying for ads and targeting specific keywords. But in this case, SEO is free. And so when you get into the right position and people are finding you, it is so good to be optimized. Now, it's even worth mentioning a little bit of this while we're here, this final bit, it's not all about Google. Now, and I'm not even talking about Bing or Go, Go, what is it, DuckDuckGo? I'm not even talking about those. I'm talking about other places where people search for people like you or services like yours or products like yours. So for example, as a designer or as an SEO expert, it's very important for me to show up in different platforms. So I don't do this right now, but if I wanted to, I could go to Fiverr and create an account there because people go to Fiverr and they search in Fiverr for SEO services. And so then I could potentially be on that platform and show up at the top of the rankings there. It has its own little world. Pinterest is another example. Instagram is another example. Facebook is another example. All of these have their little search worlds. And if you get into those worlds and start showing up at the top results, that could be very beneficial to you. I've had some interesting connections happen just by making sure I have profiles on different pages from a LinkedIn search to a Facebook page search to a Pinterest search to a Fiverr search to a any other platform, right? So search is very much so on Google, but it is on a lot of other platforms. And so you're optimizing SEO, not just for Google, but for those other platforms as well. And it's really important to see that, to see that there's a lot of different worlds where search is related and it's involved. With that said, thank you for watching or thank you for listening. This episode has been so much fun to record. I am like very focused right now, but I am so excited about these answers because these answers are gonna help a lot of people, I think really get a grasp of what they're doing and what they're investing in with SEO. Again, if you want to stay up to date with us and what we're doing, spacebaragency.com forward slash newsletter is the best way to get connected. You'll see it in the show notes or you'll see it in the description, a link to go to that page. That is the best way to get connected with us. If you go to Google and type in Spacebar Agency newsletter, you should find it at the top. And that is the best way we send out a newsletter every week and provide valuable content for you for your business as you grow. We are in the business of making it easy for business owners, freelancers, content creators, course creators, any of those above to be able to optimize their site so they could generate more traffic, generate more leads and grow their business without getting caught in the technical blah, blah, blah. We don't wanna overwhelm you with all the technical jargon. We wanna help you get the results you're looking for. And so go to spacebaragency.com forward slash newsletter. That's a way to sign up. If you're really loving this, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you're on YouTube engaging with this, this is a great way for us to stay connected. And also as we post new videos, you'll be able to see it and get connected. So totally appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, use any of the mediums to send us a message either on the website or 
in the comments or whatever that is if you have any questions, follow-up questions after this episode. All right, thanks. Peace.